This is a ball valve and I had to replace one recently so I thought I'd show you what was going on with it. Uh, this is the ball part and this part floats. It goes down in the water like this and then the ball actuates the valve down on this end. Uh, some basics, if the uh, ball has any water in it, it's, it's toast. I mean, it's done. I tried to repair them when they were copper and tried resoldering them and all that. Uh, plastic is just not worth it. Uh, you want to make sure they're screwed onto here uh, pretty tightly without puncturing the ball. So you just give them a, a twist on here. If the ball comes off of here, because during the motion going up and down, it'll, they'll sometimes unscrew themselves. If that happens, of course, the valve opens and you lose a lot of water. It won't, uh, won't shut off by itself. Uh, this is the shaft. This is the valve. We'll do a close-up here on the valve and see how that works. This is the valve body and there are two types of valve bodies. This one is a straight through and there's another type where this turns into a 90 degree. So this one you would have to supply your own 90 degree like coming in from the top of the tank or wherever your water supply is coming in. And the other type this just has the 90 degree brass built into it and you would screw that uh, your water pipe would come down and you screw that directly in there. The advantage of this style is that you can have your 90 degree in place and you just screw this valve body into it and the 90 degree type you have to rotate it around this way and that in a small space can become kind of difficult so yeah they each have their advantage but I kind of prefer this style okay so that's about the valve body the uh, water comes in here and there's a hole in there uh, yeah you can just barely see that there's a hole in there so the water comes in here and when the valve is open it comes out here um, let's see what else. Okay, we should show you how it operates. When the, when the uh, water is down, the ball float goes like this, and you can see this piston coming out of there. And we should also be able to see the piston inside there moving. You can see that. And all that's happening is it's, it's blocking this hole on this end. And we'll take it apart and take a look at it. This uh, pin is either brass or copper or stainless. I've seen people replace them with nails and that lasts at most a couple months and then the whole thing falls apart and you end up with pieces in the bottom of your tank or whatever your trough and yeah then you have to fish those out it can be a real problem you don't want them going through your pumps or whatever okay so we remove this pin like that set it off to the side and you can see it just has a finger on it and what that's doing is when it moves it's pulling this piston in and out like this and this piston has a rubber piece right here. I've tried to replace these with silicone, whatever, and you know, it doesn't work. It doesn't last. I, may, I have to find myself some industrial strength silicone and whatever. But anyway, it's never lasted, so it's uh, just not worth messing with. And so that's in there, and all it does is it goes in there and uh, seals that hole off. That's, that's uh, the, all of it. And the more the ball floats, the more pressure it puts on here to shut that off. So, yeah, that's it for the uh, functioning of one of these uh, ball float valves, uh, ball cock valves, whatever you care to call it. Hope you found that useful and interesting in your home DIY work.